I just can't get over how nice this weather is at the moment. I feel like I've spent so much of this year complaining about how spring felt more like autumn and we've had no summer yet for the last couple of weeks, minus the storm that we had, which was much needed. We've had absolutely beautiful weather and I hope that you're all enjoying it as well because we never know how long it's going to last here in England and so I have been making the most of it relatively. Today I actually spent the morning going around with the Nicholson's team just finalising the last little bits that need to be done to complete the phase of the big project because there are a few little extras that we want to have done but they will probably be done later on in the year just because we wanted to finish this phase off and then we'll start on the next phase which it won't be a big project there are just a couple of little things that need to be done but it was really reassuring I'm really excited to get this area complete now particularly the kitchen because we have got this beautiful weather it would be lovely to be able to get out and actually use it this summer I was looking online earlier because we have quite a long lead time on the taps and the waste that are going to be going in um, in the sink obviously, obviously in the sink. I stumbled across a really nice beautiful English bronzed towel rail and so I'm going to chat to Lydia but I think that will be a nice little addition to add into the kitchen and of course there will always be little things that we're adding and removing from these areas but the sort of foundation of this job should hopefully be wrapped up in the next sort of four to eight weeks which will be really nice and then the next projects that we're going to be having done here at the house will be a small amount of work in the basement a little bit of work around the front of the house and I think that will then pretty much complete the garden space we need to get some furniture just for down here I've realized as well that this little area down here gets some evening sun um, which is really nice so I think that if we do end up having some chairs and a table down here we'll probably end up sitting and having drinks just down here grabbing the last of that sun before it sets rather than behind me up there where it can get a little bit cooler in the evenings because it's sat in the shade for a couple of hours at least before the sun does go down so having this area here will be quite nice but there is another project that we're just about to get rolling and that is as I mentioned in my previous video the chicken coop and pen area so the chicken coop was supposed to arrive this morning um, unfortunately it's not going to arrive until tomorrow but that's absolutely fine because once we have that in place we'll get a better feeling for the size of it because at the moment we've never seen anything in real life that resembles the same dimension so to be able to see it sitting in situ will give us a better idea of how and where we want that to sit exactly I've kind of got a bit of a plan in place but we then will have the pen built and I think that the idea around the pen would be to use a oak post system with a lovely oak gate and then have chicken wire in between um, to basically fox proof it the company that will be using to do the carpentry actually so happen to have quite a in-depth knowledge and understanding of keeping birds. They rear pheasants, they have their own chickens and so they will be the best people to advise on creating a fox safe pen because I think I've mentioned before we do have foxes that occasionally work their way through the garden so just to ensure the chickens are as safe as possible um, we will be using that as their kind of like safe enclosure. And so that will be a project that will be coming soon and hopefully we'll have that within the next month or two as well. I don't want to get too optimistic there because tradesmen are very busy at the moment. It's very hard to get tradesmen. Um, I feel like it has been for the last year or two to be fair, but if they can get in quickly and uh, get those posts in, then the quicker that's done, the quicker we can get the chickens, which will make Lydia very happy. Talking of animals, today I'm not sure if I've actually spoke to you on this channel yet. I had to perform an artificial swarm and that is a new technique that I've had to put into place as a beekeeper. I was quite nervous about it to be honest with you because it is a performance of moves which essentially tricks the bees into thinking they've swarmed and essentially you you kind of have swarmed them without going through each step of the procedure essentially you take your box of bees and you split them into two they coexist together as independent colonies with two individual queens and I think that there is a little bit of a stigma around beekeepers and swarms because I think beekeepers 
commercially don't want their bees to swarm because they want the money for their honey. I think that hobbyists such as myself don't want our bees to swarm because we feel like that would be bad beekeeping. But I actually think primarily the reason we're looking after bees as hobbyists is to ensure that we're looking after caring for and supporting the colony as much as we can. And when you create a strong colony of bees, they're gonna do what they were born to do, which is to reproduce, AKA swarm. And so if you're a beekeeper and you're feeling a little bit down that your bees may have swarmed, then I would just say that look at it from a different perspective and you've actually created a successful colony that's being able to get to a point where they want to reproduce and swarm off and split and create more honeybee colonies so if your bees do swarm it's not the end of the world if you're able to as I was get into your hive before they swarm and you're able to perform an artificial swarm or a demerara or, or whatever technique you select then there are of course benefits to that so in my case at the moment I was always advised to have three colonies of bees and the reason why I was advised to have three colonies is because it gives you or at least it puts you in a position of power where you have the ability to be able to essentially borrow from other hives to ensure that the weaker hives can be strengthened at any point throughout the year obviously not in the winter or during the winter months but during the active beekeeping year you're more likely to create strong overwintering colonies which of course will probably try and swarm the following summer and there will become a point where I won't physically be able to house a fourth or a fifth or a sixth colony. If I do end up doing artificial swarms and creating nukes off of my colonies then I'll be donating them to the local bee associations. There's two near me and so I've got lots of choices. I'm sure there'll be lots of new beekeepers and and existing beekeepers that want to expand their colonies. Today, I'm going to be building my third and hopefully my final um, hive, which Lydia really wants me to paint. I'm on the fence as to whether I want to paint them, but she would love me to paint them um, in like an off-white and the same kind of color green as the Alatex greenhouse with on the roof. And so we'll see because it is a lot easier to paint your hives whilst they're not housed with bees, naturally and so we may do that but the first things first i'm going to build the flow hive we're going to run a time lapse and i'm going to enjoy the sun and get busy building and then i also need to build a new bee frame for the beehive to sit on because you have to have some spacing between your hives and so there's not enough space on the existing frame i built so i'm just going to situate a new one so i've ordered the wood today that arrives next week we'll get busy building and setting that in the ground in the woodlands which will give me the ability once i've built it to house four colonies but i really really just want to stick to having three which will be a lot of bees considering my langstroth beehives can probably house 50,000 bees. That would be 150,000 bees housed in the woodland. So I think that will be enough for the Mill and Gordon household. And of course, when that stuff arrives, I'll document me building that and uh, we'll get that all set up ready in the woodland because I will then be fully prepared for any eventuality. If I need to house um, some new bees, it'll all be out there set up, ready to go. I was caught a little bit short on um, my recent artificial swarm because if you remember I had the woodpecker peck a hole into the side of the brood box and the roof had had a, a stick hit it and split the roof and so I wasn't sure even though there was no evidence that there was water getting through there and so I got rid of that brood box got rid of the roof and ordered new ones and the box had arrived but the roof hadn't and so when I went to undertake the task there was no roof and so I had to order that so I, for a few days um, the hive that has housed um, the smaller number of bees actually had a limestone tile sitting on top of it but that's now changed and it's now got a proper roof on it and so I don't want to be caught out again like that and so I'm getting prepared early on in the season and that will make the whole process in the future a lot easier.
Right, I've unboxed everything and laid it out on the floor, roughly in its separate components. So we've got the floor, the roof, the brood box, the super, and in the big brown box are the actual matrix. Got a little feet, which have got the ant guards on, and then the viewing windows, the rower tray, tools. <laughs> oh, and inside those two boxes, you will find the frames that go inside the brood box. My camera is red hot. I don't think I'm gonna leave it out time lapse in. So this is where we're at at the moment and I'll show you when we're built and the hive's been fully assembled. I'm actually spending the afternoon with all of the solitary bees. This is cat mint here and they absolutely love it. I've never seen so many solitary bees or different varieties of solitary bees since we've had all of our beds redone with the wildflower and this cat mint is just so successful. I was trying to find the other day actually the name of a lot of these bees. So there are a few different um, bees that have got white bums and they've all got different names like tree bees and God knows what other bee names they are. But yeah, see if I can get one and film it. If anyone knows what these ones are, you can let me know. All right, pollen feet. This one's got pollen on it. Look at that. Wow, you've done very well there. I also saw you can buy little pollen charts which would tell you where the pollen's come from, or at least a good guess at where it's come from. You see that little pollen on its legs. <laughs> very busy, aren't they, the bees? We've made some progress. So we have the base, the brew box, and the roof built currently have the super still to put together and then the frames will just drop in in that and then I need to build which does take quite a long time the frames which I think there's 10 in total possibly even more I can't remember yeah I think there's 10 that go into my brood well there you have it one flow hive 2 built and complete the additional extras that the new flow hive 2 has is the ant guards at the bottom reducer which never used to come with this and what else have they done i think that might just be it actually i think they're the main differences and one thing i would say is, is that they've definitely improved the manufacturing side of this it felt like it puzzled together a lot easier than previously and it just felt like they've changed the plier let's see anyone can describe it but i think pretty much the rest of it is how it was before nice and easy to assemble this time didn't take me too long i spent a lot of time talking to the guys doing the chicken pen earlier cost me probably about an hour and a half so i think it a little bit slowed up but we're there it's looking good and so I'm going to probably take this over to the shed and find a temporary home for it until we get it out into the woods. You okay? I would really, really like you to put the chicken on because I am very, very hungry. Very hungry. Very exceptionally hungry. Okay. Lover boys. <laughs> Bellissimo. Fresh and clean. Well done. dinner is served. I'll tell you what, if we just had one vlogging channel, you would have some well-filmed vlogs. Because I would just be vlogging you all the time. Well, Mr. Miller Gordon, it's almost like that's my dream. Lummy, you cheeky little pussy Loomy, cat. You no. naughty little cat. Loomy, uh, babe, don't we like never this. let the, the cat come on here. <laughs> oh, looks like she wants to play. You gonna go and play? Are you going to eat our dinner? Chicken? My cat's probably cleaner than most humans, so I'm calm. Unlike you, you little dirty mutt. Well, the table has been set. We're having a chicken salad this evening. Don't be fooled. We have certainly had our fair share of food today. I had pasta at lunch, so this is by no means a light dinner. I mean, it is because of lunch. But we were just taking a look at the garden, which I think you're starting to see the shape now of this turf even more. I cut this yesterday. I really like the way it sort of flicks in. And then in particular this side here, it comes from 
sort of this oak tree and then comes around and down it kind of works the hill so it's really nice and that'll of course be where the chickens will be situated very happy it's looking amazing and the wildflower has kind of bounced back a bit it's not completely there's still lots of flat areas but it has had a go hasn't it but i think that we could possibly do things to help get them back up yes also i've not actually shown we now have the big green egg in situ did you take that one slipper off for a reason no it just got caught on the floor <laughs> fine <laughs> and you can kind of get a feel for the outdoor kitchen of course we'll have a worked up um, but it's looking lovely not even had a look yet i know it's nice I, I, isn't it? I am thinking like a chopper a chopper's block well, a chopper's block, a chopper's block. <laughs> i don't know about a butcher's block because you've got a lot of wood maybe yeah. something like metal or something like yeah quite do you know what you could do, although I just think it's not really that necessary, but you could. Do you know you have those utensil stands? So you hang like all of your utensils yeah, yeah. on. You could do something like that. Like an old one. Yeah, just like basically a metal railing system. Yeah, yeah, but you can like you can take it, it's on casters. Yeah. So you can take it over and like use it wherever you need it if you want. Well, yeah, because it there would be an, an element of convenience with chucking things on it, like yeah, yeah. when you're on the Barbie, for example. Yeah. Also on Perrin and Row, sorry to interrupt, I saw that they had the English bronze, same as our taps, in a towel rail. Towel rail? On a yeah. towel. Yeah, it's like a towel rail, but just literally one rail, not as in the radiator. Yeah. That you could just stick on the end of the okay. unit just here. Um, and you could just put a little um, towel yeah, on, on the side. Yeah, yeah. Or even if you had barbecue mitts, which I personally don't have, but if you did, you could hang a pair of those over it all. Get like a, an old galvanized sheep feeder, put soil in it, yeah, nice. Have like a little herb That's a nice idea, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, is brick, and brick is lovely, but like soften it, soften it yeah. It's a really um, nice idea, and yeah, I just can't wait for this. I know it's gonna be very cool. I can't wait like washing vegetables like this yeah i know also do you know we're gonna have hot water there as well no way yeah How so we're putting a heater in yeah so very exciting yes this this is what would be like sort of like a, a no actually oh, i don't know like i mean it looks lovely so like when you're standing here yeah, yeah. Your, this is like your view over the greenhouse, so yeah, yeah. it's obviously wider than what the camera's picking up, but... I'd be scrubbing yeah. vegetables here. Yeah. It's just amazing. I can't believe what we've done. It is phenomenal. I just wish little sausage dogs would stop making sausage tunnels in our wild. I know. Tower. Look at your little system we that really you've created. We really you wouldn't go in there. He loves it. He loves just yeah. charging through it. Look, that's the key. That's the key one. They come down the stairs, <laughs> through here, and then they go straight through. Unreal. Like a bastard. He's like, you, you found my tunnel. It's my tunnel, Daddy. <laughs> but that's what it's all about. Letting them have fun, running around, roaming around. It'll grow back, won't it, mate? Yes, Daddy. <laughs> Happy? Happy. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Ah, having some private time with your teddy. Thought you were in here. So in last week's video, you may remember, if you got around to watching it, that we went to my mum's to drop off some flowers that Lydia arranged from the Wild Flower Garden because she's recently undergone some surgery. And whilst we were there, she passed me a set of certificates, basically my GCSE report, and also a pre-GCSE report, and like a memory book of my year at school. So, Lydia said, please read your school report. 
on a vlog. And I'm just gonna sort of set the kind of tone. The tone for what I was like at school. So I wasn't interested in learning whilst I was at school. I was particularly clowny in classes. I was more interested in having fun with my friends, spending time at lunch with my girlfriend and <sighs> girlfriend. Um, yeah, so I, I was actually like, one thing that I was good at was organising my lunch breaks between my friends and my girlfriend. So like, it was like <laughs> Wait, a 50-50 I need to know more split. about this, please don't, so how did you arrange your So it would be like, the first half an hour would be with the girlfriend and then vice versa. It was actually the other way around, so I'd spend half an hour with the lads and then I'd go and spend half an hour cuddling and kissing my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> wait, did you? And this was like when we were. Did you wait, wait, wait? But did you like? Was this a discussion that you had with her, or did you just tell her? Were you like, no, you get the first half hour, the boys get the the second half hour, or was oh, she like in complete that. agreement? Was she like, yeah, 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 I'll have half half an hour, with you know. half an hour? I don't know. <laughs> because if I remember, you used to tell me what time you were going to bed, and then you would just not speak to me again after that. You were quite like set in your ways when I first met you, but. Yeah, so I love that. So basically, I think what I'm trying to say is, is that at school I was completely disinterested in education and learning, and mm, I'm I interested. that's probably why <laughs> uh, I can't speak. I properly. can't speak either, yeah. but I, like, I, I can can't help speak you. and spell very well. However, it wasn't until I was in probably my mid twenties that I actually became interested in learning, and even more still now. Um, I'm gonna turn that off. Yeah, to turn that off. I'd say until I was in my sort of like mid twenties, I wasn't particularly that interested in learning. I remember when I was sitting my um, electrical sort of exams and going through that sort of NVQ and spending four years learning how to be an electrician. After the first year, the guy that was teaching us mm -hmm. spoke to my boss and said, I don't think Ali's gonna get through this course and become an electrician. I just wanna let you know, because he's obviously investing a lot of time in me. Out of the 60, students that started the electrical course only 19 of us actually went and became fully qualified electricians and i was one of them so i taught him yes <laughs> I taught him yeah. that i could do it so anyway i then became more interested in learning and actually taking the time to i guess educate myself through choice in my early 20s so my school years were a bit of a letdown, should we say. My year 11 report, old enough to know better, but still very young. Ali is a friendly student who has shown that he has the ability to do well when he, he feels committed to do an activity. His PE report, for instance, shows excellent all-round ability and an outstanding level of enthusiasm. In other areas, however, there is clearly room for improvement, and I hope that Ali takes this as a wake-up call as he approaches the GCSE exams. Ali's trial exam performance was generally not far below his target grade, suggesting that if he steps up and sticks to it... I like how... and, and sticks to it is capital letters. <laughs> a structured revision programme could give Ali prospects to do good. Ali's attendance has been excellent, which it was. I was always at school. I liked going to school. But he you liked going to school? Yeah, I liked the social element. It's all like, literally, I was so social at school, and I just didn't learn. I just did all the socialising. How did you delegate your social time? It was all social. No, I know, but like, was it like, right, you'd be with the boys then, then you'd be no, with no, another no. group, group no, of no, boys then? No, 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 it was just I was always okay. just socialising. So in class, when the teacher was trying to teach us something, I was more interested in having a conversation and mm -hmm. socialising. That okay. was my big issue at school. Okay. He needs to work on punctuality as his frequent lateness is a bad start to the day and could easily result in missing <laughs> valuable teaching lessons. So were you, were you loaning the neighbours um, a leaf blower and having a bonfire and cleaning the cars before going to school? Time management and work organisation will be vital to Ali's success and I wish him all the best for the summer exams and his future career. Isn't that funny that something that they've picked up in this very small report is that I'm late and my time management's poor. <laughs> Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. <laughs> so the, the running joke in like our like main sort of couples friends group 
is that whenever we like we'll all be ready to go so like me carrie whatever we'll all be ready to, to go and ali will be like still in the shower or he'll be doing his hair or he would have like agreed to do something for like a neighbor or he'll have like some recycling to do there is always something for ali to do right at the point when we have to leave he'd rather be late than leave something unfinished i think that's probably the best way of describing the way that you work you've got to have everything in, in place and then yeah. you'll go this is literally me all over so it's, i'm just going to read the end this is my maths report it says that he has not attempted some and thus missed opportunities to consolidate and advance his knowledge to improve, he needs to apply himself more thoroughly in lessons these last six months. So it's the same, like, lack of commitment, lack of time management. But it was just because I was more interested in socialising. Ali has improved his behaviour a little more organised. <coughs> I am pleased he's finally settled down to work. Good luck in the summer. I think that's, that's my science teacher just probably feeling a little bit sorry. Oh. Ali could listen more carefully to advice given and <coughs> respond in a positive manner. In preparation for the exams, he must work to his strengths to ensure that he is confident about what he wants and needs to achieve when he enters the exam. I was a little disappointed with Ali's trial exam results, 42%. So I, would, I hope that following a period of resuming, he will show some improvement and realise his potential. I used to stand in the corridor of manufacturing so much. I used to get kicked out of class. What's this one? It's interesting though, isn't it? Yeah, I think what I would what I would say from my school report is there's a lot of emphasis. Can you mute the movie? <laughs> hey, Lummy. Yeah, I think that there's a lot of emphasis on GCSEs and grades, and when you're younger to perform really well and that will set you up for life and I do think that there is an element of truth in that mm. but it isn't the be all and end all. No I think that that's probably the thing that we, we probably learned the most. I just wasn't ready to learn like I know that sounds silly but no, I'm, I'm only or, ready to and, learn now and in, in my yeah, 30s. Yeah and I'm not saying that the school failed to sort of like encourage me into learning but no. I would say that the methods that they were using yeah, yeah. to teach me just didn't resonate like they would they would want me to read and learn, read yeah. books, and that's just, I don't learn like that now, so uh, yeah, I was never I, going to learn like that then. I think that that's the biggest thing that I think has like changed probably over the last like decade or so, is that I'll never forget when like, it, it's like there's so many different ways of learning, and yet the curriculum is one set way, and you have like 30 kids in a class and you all expect them to learn the same way, and it's like that mm. just... The reality is that that's just I'm not sure the case. I'm sure it's very difficult to facilitate. Absolutely, but there's difference, and that, and that's the thing. Like, the, it needs a complete reform where there's like you assess how a child learns. There must be ways that you can find how a child learns before they go into mm. um, school. I mean, I'm no expert in this, but I just know that there's like you know there's like Montessori schools and things like that where it's like child-led learning and things right. like that. I know that sitting down and reading a book on something is impossible for me to learn that way yeah like i ca it doesn't work i get so distracted it doesn't work for me and yet what is studying for exams sitting down yeah. reading a book memorizing the book yeah. and then writing it down that's not an sure intelligence chest test that's a memory test yeah but i'd say that there is an element of like academia and i could be wrong and i don't know but i feel like being academically clever for mm -hmm. me just means that you've got a great memory bank yeah and so we merit people that have got a good memory and that's why in life and in business in the real world not in the educational world you end up with lots of success stories for people that haven't or don't necessarily have a great academic background mm -hmm. because academia common sense and being able to use your critical mind it must and, being like personable and, and yeah like, but all of these things yeah there's so many different facets to the to the human brain and and what provides success over just being academically intelligent which in my opinion just means you've got a great memory mm. which i, I could be wrong but for no me, generally that's it's like there's a lot of 
emphasis, emphasis on being on able to memorize remember, yeah. remember information and then just recite it when yes. asked what it is and like for me that never works like and there's a lot of um weight i feel in the exam process mm -hmm. even when i did my electrical exam we were doing multiple choice exams i mean they were giving you like the multiple choice questions and you were just memorizing what the questions were essentially mm. and then filling out the answers hopefully they enough of them come around mm. and I, I think that it's that's crazy. the thing is like uh, so I got my degree at university I think I got like a two one or two two if I remember mm. and I did not revise I did mm. not revise because by that point I knew about myself that I can't sit down and revise I can't yeah. so I you know I've got to be able to accept that that's a waste of my time, a waste of my efforts, and a waste of me worrying about it. Yeah. And imagine if there was a, a way that I had been learning that did serve, that stimulated, yeah, you. that stimulated me and it enabled me to learn and retain yeah. that information. Because it's, it's, it's just the reading part and the memorizing. That's the, the the issues the that fault. I yeah. And imagine how well I could have done. If I if there had yeah. been a method, but it's but, it's but also equally, I don't know how much the sort of overall impact is moving forward in life. Part, yeah, because I think about I obviously essentially it's, work in the industry that I studied at university. Yeah, but I mean, I didn't, and I think that's that, what I mean. But yeah. I'm saying is that I don't feel like I apply a lot from my from, yeah, true, like anything. Yeah. From but this my is degree. what I mean. I think that when you look at when you look at people that are high performing academically they then from my experience and this is completely i'm not talking generically this is absolutely unique to my my experiences some of the most intelligent people i know haven't achieved the things in life at this moment that i think that they would have liked to have achieved when we were sitting at school and if we wrote down our 20-year plan lots of the people that didn't have the intelligence that was graded at school have actually gone on in real life to achieve their goals. I yeah, say. I think it's just very different, like a very strange process that it's like, if you do this, this, this and this, mm -hmm. you're setting yourself up for the best prospects. And it's like, the reality is, is that there's so many different ways to be successful. There will be the academics, you know, you get the Bill Gates, the people like that, you will get the academics that are, are successful. Oh yeah, I definitely say you're, you're hedging your bets. There's a fly in the light. You're sitting on a light, by the way. I love that you just said hedging your bets, and I said edging my bets in in a recent video, and someone was like, you do know it's hedging your bets, and I was like, oh, I didn't know it was hedging your bets, I thought it was edging my bets. What if I want to edge my bets? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so if you were to hedge your bets, you would definitely put your money down on, a, on somebody that was academically intelligent. I think that's the point. It's that, yeah. in general, of course, people that have a... And I don't know whether this is a... A genetics thing access to more of their brain they've either got that through their genetics or DNA or whether they've managed to train their brains because essentially good memory can be trained right so you can train your memory bank neuroplasticity I mean I don't know about that I like I think you can that's what neuroplasticity is about yes it? yeah like yeah stretching and remembering yes. and yeah, it's like yeah. a mu your brain's a muscle and the more you work it the better it is yes I would um, also the thing that intrigues me though is that you're. This is where we, we're getting very sciencey. I don't think we've ever had a conversation mm -hmm. like this on YouTube. Um, your prefrontal cortex mm. doesn't develop until you are 25. Now I don't know mm. if that has any relation to you know learning and what have you, or whether that's more on like just the developmental side of your existence you know and yet we're taking exams and deciding on our careers when we're like 14 15 16 like yeah. picking our um sets or whatever and what, what have you it's just a very interesting, interesting thing like i wish we could find my report cards like genuinely uh, like they would be fascinating yeah but i think i have to like say i feel like a teacher in a report is always going to play on the side of caution they're not going to go in on me on a report that they're going to be passing to my parents. Mm. So that that's like a very PC report. Now I'm like, oh my God, there's so much for me to learn. Yeah. And it's so exciting. Like, 
I think that I'd rather, in all honesty, I would rather have my level of intellect, which isn't great. Like I struggle with so many things and, and same for you. Yeah, like absolutely. you're not going to be wowed by like my IQ. Like one of our friends went sometimes every now and again, he'll like drop something into conversation. And we always joke that he definitely dumbs himself down to hang out with us. <laughs> but like he'll just he drop does. something into conversation and he's so intelligent. And we're like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like so you're never going to have that conversation with us but I would I would rather be this way where I'm like li life and learning and an experience is still yeah. very exciting and I'm like later on in life wanting to do that yeah no I agree mm. it's funny because there are elements of who I was at school that are still within me now right mm. so some of my traits obviously as we've just heard but one of the best things that we've discovered I would say is audible it's like really proactive I think for us well I think I think that that would be the, the key thing that taught us this is just it in a nutshell imagine if we'd been allowed to listen to the textbooks yeah. at school just that simple change yeah could have, would, been, a could have been a huge difference yeah. to, to our, our learning our grades our abilities yeah and that's not everyone could could listen if they wanted to but i just think that that's how i ret i know that about myself i cannot sit down and read a book that isn't like an interesting book and absorb, I, the information. And absorb that information i can listen to it and i'll be like oh my goodness me just the prefrontal cortex thing yeah. i listen to that on a podcast i really enjoy having open and honest conversations with friends where we can share different perspectives and opinions and I think that the best way to, to learn about anything in life is to have a well-rounded understanding. Well, I think that that's such a good point as well, is that like, I definitely find it that where like, there are certain areas where debate and conversation is not allowed. Whereas for, for us in our friendship groups, like debate and conversation is so important. And like, yeah. we'll sit and have full on debates with like our friends and I remember we had one recently where we had like a proper debate and we had completely differing views from our friends but that didn't mean that we fell out and it was always yeah. like that our friends didn't know what to do because they were like are you gonna are, they, are you gonna take this and we're like no we love this yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. so interesting hearing like your thoughts on this but also like putting ours forward and seeing your reaction to ours like it's yeah it's, yeah. Be it's because I mean the particular thing we're talking about like there are so many nuances within that discussion, discussion mm. that it, it, it is open to interpretation and perspective. And so that's, yeah. this is why I think it's so important to have conversation mm. with other people that have differing views, that come from different backgrounds, that have experienced different things. I think that the world is full of misinformation. And mm. I think that I would have been, and I guarantee that every single person watching this video at some point would have been fed misinformation and truly believed it because it can also be logical mm. but be but be incorrect and I think that staying open-minded and always being willing to learn is something that I've learned to be quite a powerful self-help tool mm. I say. The, the old saying that I absolutely love that James said it's not what you know it's what you don't know for sure that just ain't so such a good quote mm. because that is truly where you can get stuck because you're so certain of something that you believe it, but actually it's not the truth. Mm. That's a very in-depth conversation to have about your um, your report that basically says that you've not changed at all. <laughs> <laughs> you're still stupid, you're time management's poor. No, you are not stupid, but... A no, 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 and this, but I think this is what this conversation is exactly about. Like we, I know that you and I are exactly the same. Like we get the same kinds of comments, like people correcting our grammar, people no. correcting our spelling, people correcting how we say yeah. things. For a few years, when we were like younger and probably didn't know how to take comments in that way, it's like we would take it really personally. You'd feel silly, you'd feel embarrassed, whatever. But what we're learning and like understanding more of is that you know that doesn't actually mean anything. That just means that that's a weakness of ours. Like I'll never forget the time I spelled as asparagus with an E. And I was like, I know how to spell asparagus. Yeah. Why have I put Where an E on that? E? At the beginning, it was asparagus. <laughs> 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 oh, <no. laughs> 
<laughs> so like I get it all the time and yeah. I'm like I know that that's not how you spell that I know that but yeah. at 35 years old like I maybe it's that I just I don't put it at the forefront I don't like it's not something that bothers me enough whereas there are people no. that it really bothers but yeah, yeah. anyway me I and mean, my spouse I, I, like one of the sort of internal jokes that we have amongst friends and Liz and I is the made up words and the misuse of words <laughs> in like the wrong sentences like that's one of my one of my yeah uh, what was the one that you did recently that was really funny and <laughs> you were like doing a video where you were trying to like address the fact that you say things wrong and in the video oh you... i say mispronounce i say uh, oh, yeah. mispronunciate mispronunciate no yes yeah, so you're like yeah so i know i mispronunciate things on my baby you can't put that out <laughs> <laughs> It's not my strength. It's not my uh, strength. <laughs> Vocabulary is something that is not my strength. No, but I and, think and it's I, hilarious. I have, I have improved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over the years, and I will continue to improve. <laughs> and it definitely helps hanging around with different groups of people. There's nothing wrong with the lads on site, but I used to swear so much when I was working on site, mm. and I've definitely cut down on swearing. Mm. And my vocabulary has started to improve and that's just from working in this industry from being around people that are in this space has mm. improved my vocabulary mm. rather than a lot of swearing <laughs> not saying all tradesmen swear there are some incredibly intelligent and yeah. well-spoken tradesmen but sometimes they mispronounce the eight as well <laughs> <laughs> Do they? it's not a word babe oh, no. it should be a word <laughs> i'm jealous that you've got that i'm jealous i don't think i've got anything from school Anyway, let's go to bed. Yeah, yeah, let's go.